Hello students, hope you are doing well. In this video, we are going to discuss using WAN technologies of Unit 4, Designing Remote Connectivity for the Subject Enterprise Network Design of BU7 Semester IT, University of Mumbai. Numerous WAN technologies exist today. The new technologies are constantly emerging. The most appropriate WAN selection usually result in high efficiency and leads to customer satisfaction. The network designer must be aware of all possible WAN design choices using taking into account of customer requirement. This lecture describes the use of various WAN technologies including remote access, VPN, WAN backup and the internet as WAN backup. In this lecture, we will cover remote access design, VPN design, where VPN application VPN connectivity option and benefit of VPN will be covered. WAN backup strategies like dial-up routing, permanent secondary uh, WAN link, shadow PVC, and the internet as WAN backup technology, including IP routing without constraints and layer three tunneling with GRE and IP security. Remote access network design. When you are Designing remote access network for teleworkers or traveling employees. The type of connection drives the technology selection, such as whether to choose a data link or network layer connection by analyzing appropriate application requirement and service provider offering. You can choose the most suitable of a wide range of remote access technologies. Typical remote access requirements include data link layer WAN technologies from remote site to the enterprise age network. Investment and operating costs are main issue. Low to medium volume data file transfer and interactive traffic. Increasing need to support voice services. Remote access to the enterprise age network is typically provided over permanent connections for remote teleworkers through a dedicated circuit or provision service or on-demand connection for traveling workers. Remote access technology selection include dial-up, both analog and digital, DSL cable and hotspot wireless services. On-demand routing. Dial-on-demand routing is a technique whereby a router can dynamically initiate, close and close a circuit switch station when transmitting and station demands. A router is configured to consider certain traffic interesting, such as a traffic from particular protocol and other traffic uninteresting. When the router receives interesting traffic design for a remote network, a circuit is established and the traffic is transmitted normally. If the router receives uninteresting traffic and a circuit is already established, that traffic is also transmitted normally. The router maintains an idle timer that is reset only when it receives interesting traffic. If the router does not receive any interesting traffic before the ideal timer expires, the circuit is terminated. Likewise, if the router receives uninteresting traffic and no circuit exists, the router drops the traffic. VPN design. A VPN is connectivity deployed on shared infrastructure with the same policies, security and performance as private network, but typically with lower total cost of ownership. VPN is virtual private network. The infrastructure and use can be the internet and IP infrastructure on any way infrastructures such as frame relay, network or ATM van. In this section, we will discuss VPN, access VPN or VPN application, intranet VPN and extranet VPN. So let us discuss each one by one. Here, access VPN. This is the one of the application of uh, VPN. Access VPNs provide access to corporate internet or extranet over a shared infrastructure and have the same policies as private network. Remote access connectivity is through dial-up, ISDN, DSL, wireless or cable technology. 
access vpn enable businesses to outsource their dial or other broadband remote access connections without compromising their security policies the two access vpn architecture can be initiated and network uh, access server initiated connection there is a client access client initiated and network access server initiated connection with client initiated vpn users establish an encrypted ip tunnel okay encrypted ip tunnel from their pc across an sp's shared network service providers shared network to their corporate network with network access service uh, server enabled tunnel what happen the tunnel is initiated from nas that is network access server so in this scenario remote a remote user dial into the local sp point of presence pop and sp initiates a secure encrypted tunnel to the corporate network so this is how access vpn works now come to intranet vpn intranet vpns link remote offices by extending the corporate network across a shared infrastructure the intranet vpn services are typically based on extending the basic remote access vpn to other corporate offices across the internet or across the service providers ip backbone important thing is that there are no performance guarantee with vpn across the internet no one organization is responsible for the performance of internet the main benefit of intranet vpn are reduced van in structure uh, van infrastructure needs which result in lower ongoing lease line frame relay or other van charges and operational saving now come to extranet vpn extranet vpn extend the connectivity to business partners suppliers and customers across the internet or and service providers network the security policy becomes very important at this point for example the company does not want to hacker to spoof any order from a business partner the main benefit of the external vpn are ease of securely connecting a business partner as needed and the ease of serving the connection with the business partner partner today competitor tomorrow which becomes as simple as shutting down the vpn tunnel very granular rules can be created for what traffic is shared with the peer network in the extranet so this is how uh, vpn applications are there okay there are three different vpn connectivity options are available first one is overlay vpns second is virtual private dial up network or vpdn and third is peer to peer vpn overlay vpns with overlay vpns the providers infrastructure provide virtual point to point links between customer site overlay vpns are implemented with the uh, number of technologies including traditional layer 1 and layer 2 technologies such as isdn sonet sdh frame relay and atm overlaid with modern layer 3 ip based solutions such as generic routing encapsulation that is gre gre is generic routing encapsulation okay so and ip security from the layer 3 perspective the provider's network is invisible the customer routers are linked with emulated point to point links the routing protocol runs directly between routers that establish routing adjacencies and exchange routing information the provider is not aware of customer routing and does not have any information about customers uh, routes the provider's only responsibility is the point to point data transport between customer side although they are well known 
and easy to implement overlay vpns are more difficult to operate and have higher maintenance cost for the for these reasons like uh, every individual virtual circuit must be provisioned second thing is optimum routing between customer site requires a full mesh of virtual circuit between sites and bandwidth must be provisioned on a site to site basis so the concept of vpns was introduced early in the emergence of data communication with technologies such as x.25 x.25 and frame relay these technologies are virtual circuits to establish end to end connection over shared sp infrastructure in the case of overlay vpns emulated point to point link replace the dedicated links and the provider infrastructure is statistically shared overlay vpns enable the providers to offer the connectivity for lower price and result in the lower operational cost this figure shows an overlay vpn the router in the left here in the enterprise age module okay this is the enterprise age module has one physical connection to service point with two virtual circuit provisions this is virtual circuit number 1 and virtual no circuit number 2 service providers network is there so it is provisioned virtual circuit number 1 provides connectivity to the router on the top right okay router on the top right virtual circuit number 2 provides connectivity to the branch office router on the bottom right so this is branch office router and this is how this uh, overlay vpns are working so this is the overlay network and here vpn can be work easily this diagram is very simple okay virtual private dial up networks vpdl so this is the diagram for vpdl remote access module is there enterprise age module is there and internet service provider is here so these are the different different things vpdn tunnel is attached dmz triple aca wan lns all these things are attached here so vpdns enable the enterprise to configure secure network that rely on isp for connectivity with vpdns the customers use providers dial in or other type of connectivity infrastructure for their private connection a vpdn can be used with any available access technology ubiquity is important uh, meaning that virtual private dial up networks should work with any technology including modem isdn x dsl or cable so these are the access technology okay the isp agrees to forward the company's traffic this isp should agree to forward the traffic from isp's point of presence to company's run home gateway then network configuration and security remain in the client's control okay so client uh, network security is uh, controlled under the client the sp supplies a virtual tunnel between the company site using cisco layer 2 this is the virtual tunnel so cisco layer 2 forwarding point to point tunneling or ietf layer 2 tunneling protocol l2tp this figure shows the vpdn in uh, the isp terminates the dial up connection at the l2tp l2tp okay l2tp access concentrator this is the l2tp access concentrator and forward traffic through dynamically established tunnel to a remote access server called l2tp network server l2tp network server this is l2tp l2tp network server a vpdn provide potential operations and infrastructure cost savings because a company can outsource its dial up equipment thereby avoiding the cost of being in the remote access server business access virtual private network connectivity involves configuration of vpdn tunnel so there are two types of tunnel the client's pc initiate voluntary tunnel okay voluntary tunnel the client dials into sp network a point to point protocol session is established and the user logs 
onto the SP network. The client then runs the VPN software to establish a tunnel to network server. Then compulsory tunnel. This is voluntary tunnel and this is compulsory tunnel requires the SP participation and awareness giving the client no influence over tunnel selection. The client is still dials in and establish a point to point protocol session but the SP not the client establishes the tunnel to the network server. Peer to peer virtual private networks. In the peer to peer virtual private networks the provider actively participates in the customer's routing. Next is traditional peer to peer virtual private networks are implemented with packet filter on the shared provider's age. Routers or with dedicated per customer's T routers in addition to high maintenance cost for the packet filter approach or equipment cost for the dedicated per customer PE router approach. Both methods require the customer to access, uh, accept the provider's assigned address space or, the, or to use the public IP address. So we need to use public IP address or provided by the access provider, okay? Uh, per customer uh, for the dedicated uh, per customer PE routers approach both method require the customer to accept provider assigned address space or to use public IP addresses in the private customers network modern MPLS virtual private network provide all the benefit this provides all the benefits of peer-to-peer -peer virtual private network and alleviate most of the peer-to-peer -peer virtual private network drawbacks such as the need for common customer address okay such as the need for common customer address and overlapping addresses which are usually the result of this is the result of companies using private addressing are one of the major obstacle to successful peer-to-peer -peer vpn implementation mpls vpn solve the uh, this problem by giving each virtual private network its own routing and forwarding table in the router thus effectively creating virtual routers for each customer. So this is coming under RFC 4364 BGP MPLS IP virtual private network and defines the MPLS virtual private network. With MPLS virtual private networks, networks are run via static route configuration or with the routing protocol such as OSPF EIGRP routing information protocol version 2 or border gateway protocol from internet routers. So MPLS, MPLS use label to identify a flow of packet because it is label switching method. MPLS VPNs use additional label to specify VPN and corresponding VPN destination network allowing for overlapping addresses between VPN. There are certain benefits of VPN like flexibility, scalability and lower network configuration cost. With flexibility, VPN offer flexibility because site to site and remote access connections can be set up quickly and over existing infrastructure to extend the networks to the remote user. Extranet connectivity for business partner is also possible. Variety of security policies can be provisioned in a VPN thereby enabling flexibility in connection interconnection of different security domains. Now come to scalability. Scalability VPN allow an organization to leverage and extend the classic WAN to more remote and external users. VPNs offer scalability over large areas because IP transport is universally available. This arrangement reduces the number of physical connections and the, it also simplifies the underlying structure of the customer's WAN. Now come to lower network communication cost. So this is very big advantage of this uh, VPN. Lower cost is primary reason for migrating from traditional connectivity option to a VPN connection. Reduce dial-up and dedicated bandwidth infrastructure and service provider costs make VPN attractive. Customer can reuse existing links and take advantage of statistical packet multiplexing features. Ban backup strategies. So here we will describe various backup options for providing alternative path for remote access. WAN links are 
relatively unreliable compared to land links and often are much slower than the lands to which they connect. This connection is uncertain. This combination is of uh, uncertain reliability, lack of speed and high importance uh, make van links good candidate for uh, redundancy to achieve high availability. Branch officers should experience minimum downtime in case of primary link failure. A backup connection can be established either via dial-up or by using permanent connection. The main van backup options are these are the dial-up backup routing, permanent secondary van link and shadow PVC. So let us discuss each one in detail. Dial backup routing. Dial backup routing. This is dial backup routing is a way using dial-up services for backup purpose. In this scenario, the switch circuit provides a backup services for another type of circuit such as point-to-point -point or frame relay. The router initiates the dial-up backup line when it detects a failure of the primary circuit. The dial backup line provides van connectivity until the primary circuit is restored at which time the dial backup connection terminate now come to permanent secondary van links this is the diagram of permanent secondary van link here enterprise a site is shown in this van router a and b separate van interfaces are there and in secondary provider primary pvc for office A and primary PVC for office B and this is the line okay 512 kbps and in remote site separate van interface branch office A and branch office B is there backup PVC for office A and backup PVC for office B so what is inside that permanent secondary van link deploying an additional permanent van link between each remote office and central office makes the network more fault tolerant this solution offers the advantages like first advantage is provides a backup link second of uh, is increased bandwidth and third is different different switching modes like process fast and other modes so let us discuss advantages of using this provides a backup link the backup link is used if a primary link that connects any remote office with the central office fails Routers automatically route around failed link by using floating static routes and routing protocols such as EIGRP and OSPL. If one link fails, the router recalculates and sends all traffic through another link, allowing application to proceed if a WAN link fails, thereby improving application's availability. So what is floating static routing? Floating static route is one uh, that appears in the routing table only when the primary route goes away. The administrative distance of the static route is configured to higher than the administrative distance of the primary route and it floats above the primary route until the primary route is no longer available. Now come to increase bandwidth, the second advantage. This is the first advantage and this is second advantage. So increase bandwidth, both the primary and secondary links can be used simultaneously because they are permanent routing protocol automatically performs load balancing between two parallel links with equal cost or unequal cost if eigrp is used the resulting increased bandwidth decreases response time cost is the primary disadvantage of uh, duplicating van link to each remote office okay so there is uh, there is two van links separate van interfaces are there so this is the only disadvantage in addition to new equipment, including a new WAN router interface, a large star network with 20 remote sites might need 20 new virtual circuits. In this figure, the connection between the enterprise age and remote site use permanent primary and secondary WAN links for redundancy. A routing protocol such as EIGRP that supports load balancing over the unequal path on either a P, uh, per packet or per destination basis is used to increase the utilization of backup link if a van connection are relatively slow less than 56 kbps per packet load balancing should be used load balancing occurs on per destination basis when fast switching is enabled which is appropriate on van connection faster than 56 kbps now come to switching modes and uh, yes so there are different different switching modes okay process fast and other modes so during process switching 
the router examines incoming packet and looks for layer 3 address in the routing table okay layer 3 address that is logical address so which is located in main memory is to associate the address with a destination network or subnet process switching is a scheduled process performed by the system uh, processor compared to other switching nodes uh, modes process switching is slow because of latency caused by uh, scheduling and latency within the process itself actually context switching time is also very very high as compared to other method with fast switching an incoming packet matches an entry in the fast switching cache also called the root cache okay which is located in main memory this is also located in main memory actually the cache is populated when a first packet is to uh, the destination is process switch fast switching is done via asynchronous interrupts which are handled in real time and result in higher throughput so this result in higher throughput other switching modes are available on some routers including autonomous switching silicon switching optimum switching distributed switching and net flow switching cisco express forwarding that is cef topology this also has uh, switching capabilities with ip now come to shadow pvc or shadow virtual circuit so with shadow pvc as long as maximum load on the shadow pvc does not exceeds the certain rate such as one fourth of the primary speed okay one fourth of the primary speed while the primary pvc is available sp provides a secondary pvc without any additional charge if the traffic limit on the shadow pvc exceeds while the primary pvc is up the sp charges for the access load on the shadow pvc so this figure this second figure shows enterprise A's central site service provider remote sites branch office a and branch office b now shadow pvc for office a and shadow pvc for office b is shown here and primary pvc and primary pvc for office a and office b here in this uh, permanent secondary van link uh, van link separate van interfaces are there but here what happened Re in remote side shadow pvc is there okay so this figure shows redundant connection between remote sites and ethernet a is using the shadow pvc offered by sp because the potential for additional cost the router must avoid sending the unnecessary data except for example routing traffic over the shadow pvc so now come to internet as van backup technology there are different different technologies available with this so what is this here we will describe the internet as an alternative option for failed van connection this type of connection is considered best effort does not guarantee any bandwidth common method for connection uh, connecting a non contiguous private network over public ip includes ip routing without constraint gre tunnels and ip security tunnels okay so ip routing without constraint ip routing without constraint when relying on the internet to provide backup for office uh, for branch offices a company must fully corporate with isp and announce its network the backup network the internet therefore becomes aware of the company's data because it is sent unencrypted next is layer 3 tunneling with gre and ip security layer 3 tunneling layer 3 tunneling layer 3 tunneling uses a layer 3 protocol to transport over layer 3 network typically layer 3 tunneling is used either to connect two non contiguous parts of non ip network over an ip network or connect two ip over a backbone ip network possibly hiding the ip addressing details of two networks from the backbone ip network so there are two layer there are two layer 3 tunneling methods one is gre and second is ip security okay so let us discuss actually these two methods are combined with layer 3 tunneling 
with GRE and IPsec. So let us discuss each one. GRE, a protocol developed by the Cisco that encapsulates a wide variety of packet types inside IP tunnels. GRE is designed for generic tunneling protocol in Cisco I IOS. GRE tunnels IP over IP, which can be useful when building a small scale IP VPN network that does not require substantial security. GRE also enables simple and flexible deployment of basic IP virtual private networks deployment and deployment is easy. However, tunnel provision, uh, tunnel provisioning is not very scalable in this uh, in a full mesh network because every point to point association must be defined separately. The packet payload is not protected against sniffing and unauthorized change. No encryption is used and no sender authentication occurs. Using GRE tunnels as a mechanism for backup links has several drawbacks, including uh, administrative overhead, scaling to large number of tunnels, and processing overhead of the GRE encapsulation. GRE encapsulation processing is also requires use processing time. Now come to IP security tunnel. IP security tunnel is both a tunnel encapsulated protocol and security protocol. IP security provides security for the transmission of sensitive information over unprotected networks such as internet. By encrypting the tunnel's data, IPsec act as network layer or tunneling transport mode and protect and authenticate IP packets between participating IP devices. And there are some features of IP security tunnels. First is data confidentiality okay so data confidentiality and ip security center can encrypt packet before transmitting them across the network second is data integrity an ip security receiver can authenticate packets sent by ip sent uh, ip security center to ensure that the data has not been altered during transmission next is data origin authentication so data origin authentication and ip a uh, security receiver can authenticate the source of uh, the sent IP packet. This service depends on the data integrity services. Okay, so this is entirely dependent on data integrity services. Now come to auto re replay, uh, not auto replay, anti replay. An IP security receiver can detect and reject replay by rejecting old or duplicate packets. Easy deployment. IP security can be deployed with no change to the intermediate system, the ISP's backbone, and no change to existing application if it is transparent to application. Now come to internet key action because security is involved. So internet key action and public key infrastructure is also the part of this. IP security uses IKE for automate key management and public key infrastructure IP security is in interoperable with PKI. IP security can be combined with GRE tunnels to provide security in GRE tunnels. For example, GRE payload, the IP packet would be encrypted. So what is inside that uh, internet as band backup technology, remote access is there, enterprise age is there, central office is there, and SP or frame relay, ISP, backup GRE tunnel, and branch office. So with this, we create the infrastructure as WAN backup technology. Because it is a standard based IP security, allows Cisco devices to interoperate with the non Cisco IP security compliant networking devices, including PCs and servers. IP security also allows use of digital certificates using IKE protocol and certification authorities, that is CA. Always seen CA. You have seen CA, right? Okay. So, a digital certificate contains information to identify a user's devices such as name, serial number, company, or IP address. It also contains a copy of the device public key, the CA, which is third party that receiver explicitly trusts to validate identities and create digital certificate signs the certificate. When using digital certificate, each device is controlled with a certificate uh, CA, that is uh, a certificate authorities. 
when two devices wants to communicate they exchange certificate and digitally sign data to authenticate each other manual exchange and verification of key is not required when a new device is added the network to the network it must simply enroll with ca none of the other devices need modification when new device attempt to ip security connection certificates are automatically exchanged and the device can be authenticated in this figure it illustrates two non contiguous network connected over a point to point logical link with backup implemented over ip network using grp ip tunnel gre ip tunnel such tunnels are configured between a source that is ingress sources ingress router and destination or egress router egress router okay so, so and are visible as interfaces on each router data to be forwarded across the tunnel is already formatted in a packet and encapsulated in the standard ip packet header this packet is further encapsulated with new gre header and placed into the tunnel with the destination ip address set to the tunnel endpoint the new next hope when the gre packet reaches the tunnel's endpoint the gre header is stripped away and packet continues to forward to the destination with the original ip packet so in this lecture we have covered using wan technologies remote access network design vpn design vpn application vpn connectivity option benefits of vpn wan backup strategies like dial backup routing permanent secondary wan link shadow pvc the internet as wan backup technology like ip routing without constraints and layer 3 tunneling with gre and ip security in less, next lecture we will discuss enterprise edge wan and man architecture so thank you very much bye bye for now have a nice day have a nice time